Hello, Diesel fans, and welcome to episode seven of the official Diesel Power Podcast. On today's episode, we have Johnny Gilbert from Stainless Diesel. Johnny has been innovating new products and pushing this industry forward for years. We're excited to have him on the show. And there's a special treat for all the Diesel Power podcast fans out there. Stainless Diesel is offering $100 off any order over $650. And it's easy to cash in. Visit StainlessDiesel.com or StreetDieselPower.com and enter promo code PODCAST for instant rebates. If you call, just mention the podcast and get the savings right over the phone. We definitely want to thank you, Johnny, uh, for joining us today. It's it's a pleasure to have you and, and chat with you about your, your company and your products and and uh, what you guys are doing in the diesel industry. Yeah, thanks for the invite. It's uh, great great to meet you here. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit how Stainless Diesel started. Uh, we started about 10 years ago. Uh, actually, kind of a side business for us. Um, my main business is basically a trucking business. So we had uh, uh, semis and some pickup trucks that we had to uh, keep running, you know, so we were working on them a lot. Um, we also try to tune them up a little bit, get better mileage, that kind of thing. That's how it started. You know, as far as uh, the performance aspect, um, did you have a background in, in racing or sled pulling? Or, or any of those kind of competitions? Well, uh, definitely been drag racing since I was 16 years old. Okay. Um, my, my dad definitely got me into that. Um, I was the kid that always took his toys apart and uh, got yelled at by my parents, that kind of thing. <laughs> so I was one of the one of the know how things worked. So it was a good time. So when you go from like stainless diesels, a, they're a household name in the diesel industry for a lot of different products. How did it go from where it was to where it is now and, and how quickly it's grown and how big it's got? The industry is great. You know, we started out small just doing uh, just piping kits. And then uh, we found the need for, um, you know, some other things like our, our manifolds. And, you know, customers would just call us and, hey, uh, could you make this? Could you make that? And we might need one of these. And I'm like, hmm. You know, so we just kind of found our niche that way. So one of the questions we got asked a ton uh, when we had you on the podcast was about these five blade mafia turbos. They look really cool. People are curious about them. W- what are they? And how did you guys bring these to market? We initially had the idea about two and a half years ago to come up with something different, something unique that would work well for our turbo kits, uh, you know, single turbo twin turbos. And uh, we're re- re- very fortunate to have a great dealer network. So we, um, did about a year, year, year plus worth of R and D using some dealers, and of course on our um, highest horsepower, you know, uh, VP, you know, fuel only truck as well, you know, our shop truck, and uh, just they're they're crazy. They make a, a very loud turbo uh, jet engine like sound, which a lot of guys like. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and um, they they definitely cool off EGTs and move a lot of air. So. Um, Lots of testing. <laughs> Do they come in S three hundreds and S four hundred frame chargers? Uh, yep. All of all of our, um, you know, we've got the street sizes and we've got some larger, uh, big singles, you know, small singles. So, uh, sixty three millimeter is a really popular size for us, and uh, that's your daily driver stuff. So uh, anybody for five hundred to six hundred fifty horsepower range, uh, they work very well. Tow tow a gooseneck trailer. Um, We've got them in 66 millimeter for the S300 frame as well. And then we step up to our uh, 400 frame. So uh, our 72 millimeter, we have a 68 millimeter and an 80 millimeter, as well as our 75s. So lots of sizes. Do you guys offer them in uh, like T3, T4? Oh, yeah. Yep. All of, uh, we've got T3, T4, and T6 as well. And uh, we use them in, uh, you know, turbo like a twin turbo kit, you know, single turbo, it just depends on what the customer's looking for. We like to um, personalize, uh, you know, exactly what the customers want. It definitely comes through, you know, with the product line, is you guys offer a ton of different options for colors, for setups. Um, how hard is it to put together a product line like that where you give so much customization? Well, I and mean, that's, that's another thing that was basically uh, customer-driven. Um, we had customers saying, you know, hey, we don't want to buy this uh, this one-stop 
you know, one size fits all thing. We would like to have a red one or a blue one or I want a polished one or, you know, something like that. And that's kind of how that evolved, I guess. But uh, it's difficult. Uh, we, we got a two week build time on custom builds like that. And uh, we hit the deadline. It's it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool, though. It, it's it's a very unique part of uh, the industry. And the product line is to offer so much customization. But, it, you know, truck owners, they want to personalize colors or, or, or different looks to go along with the truck. So we think that's awesome you guys offer that. Yeah, yeah. We've had uh, we definitely had some guys, you know, they're wanting some uh, unique things. We've had a customer that we did um, – camouflage uh piping for uh through one of our dealers out uh out west so it's great to see that kind of you know, guys wanting everything custom we can make that happen <laughs> now as a uh, as a six seven cummins guy one of the things that uh has always piqued my interest is a second gen swap and you guys got the manifolds for them the the chargers like the five blade mafia turbo what kind of performance gains do people get when they do a second gen manifold setup on a five nine or a six seven? Say versus the typical common rail manifold. I guess what we've seen is that uh, you know we've done the second gen swaps for quite a while, um, and initially on the five nines, of course, but uh, they, they seem to get rid of that common rail rattle or that raspy tone that you'll hear on a third gen style manifold truck, and um, make it sound more like a you know closer to a second gen, let's say. Uh, real real diesel diesel tone you know real good sound um but what we found out is that um uh we've had people report you know better mileage that kind of thing and better power you know back to back say from one position third gen position to the second gen location but um uh, one thing i guess we do a little bit different is uh we put the manifold in twin position so you're flipping it up mm -hmm. uh on our single swaps and uh, what we found is that uh, if you look at the yeah. airflow direction as it comes out of the manifold and you put, you know, a, a, a nice, you know, bore one or turbo on like just a 366 or a 400 exhaust housing as well, whether it's T3 or T4, um, six, seven guys, you know, we tend to run the T4 stuff, but uh, the air does a continuous circular motion when the manifold's flipped up in twin position as opposed to, like a second gen where the manifold's facing down, the air's doing an S-shaped maneuver, so it turns down and then back into the turbo housing. So uh, air generally doesn't like to change direction. Um, so a little better velocity, I think it makes the turbo respond faster. Gotcha. Yeah, one of our listeners wanted us to ask you that question specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered. I always wondered as well. It's a it's a very clean setup. I, I've seen them on trucks before. Sure. And um, one thing on the intake side, I guess as well. Um, you know, third gen position, you've got this hard ninety off of the turbocharger, and it bends up and nineties into the air filter box. Um, on our second gen swap with the turbo in the high position, we've got a just a small bend, about a thirty degree bend in the pipe, and it's pretty much straight shot into the turbo. Um, hard bends off the face of the turbo. Uh, affect a little bit of power on the chassis dyno from what we've seen. Yeah, it's a complete solution you guys got then. A lot of time and effort and design goes into these these kits that you know people are putting on their truck to make that extra power. Yeah, just trying to trying to make things more efficient. <laughs> you, you brought up the dyno, and um, I had heard that you guys got a an, an addition there at the shop or, or something you're working on with a dyno setup. Uh, yep, uh, and we moved shops about a year ago, <laughs> so now we have some more room to play with, I guess. And uh, we're, we're definitely excited about the, the larger chassis dyno that we uh, recently got. So it's got some great capabilities. It's rated for 2,500 horsepower. They built in a unique feature uh, that we were asking about. We can do a reverse pull on the chassis dyno. It's going to be interesting, you know, for our sled puller guys. Oh, yeah. That'll be really cool to see what you guys are able to do with that and test some trucks and, and these products. Definitely. With your exhaust manifolds, they have a 0% failure rate, and that, that catches everyone's attention. What goes into building these manifolds that makes them so bulletproof? You know, years ago when we were you know, first started playing with the trucks and trying to keep our tow trucks alive, I mean, one thing that we had problems with, um, you know, a lot of heat cycles on a tow truck every day, you know, pulling a heavy trailer and, and trying to keep things alive. And what we noticed is we had manifold failures, the stock turbo manifolds, you know, second gens, at the time we're cracking, we had problems, you know, 
we <laughs> we had one work truck that we still joke about. Um, we broke this broke the manifold, and it at about five o'clock in the evening, and this thing had to be on the road at four in the morning uh, you know, to deliver some parts to a customer. And uh, we stayed up late, and I was looking at how thin the the stock manifolds were on the Cummins, and I'm like, wow, no wonder it. No wonder this thing broke. <laughs> so we stayed up real late. Uh, we we brazed it, actually, for a good temporary fix. We got the work truck back on the road. <laughs> Needless to say, that fix didn't last long. So uh, it was just uh, you know something that I did a lot of research on. I found a material that did uh, basically accepts tons of heat cycles with no failure. And then we did uh, some flow testing, uh, flow simulations, and designed you know all of the internal turns and how big we wanted the inside to be and uh, found a great foundry in Michigan to pour it for us and uh, then we were off to the races. And they come in T3, T4, and T6 right? Yep that's correct as well as uh, 24 and 12 valve. But one of the really cool things th- that isn't common either is you guys have hardware that will come in the kits or different ones you can choose which is it's nice to that nice finishing touch sure (laughs) yeah it's just one of those things where um uh you know it's it's, you don't have to go grab and uh you know guessing what you're going to need to put this thing on you know we send bolts uh it's pre-drilled and tapped you know for that eighth inch npt as well as quarter inch uh some gauge you know edut guys uh some gauge packages will have one size or the other so um we also include brass plugs so if you don't use either one, you can plug those. That's really convenient when you're there putting it on a truck, and you know if you got an EGT probe, it's ready. If you don't have one yet, then you can keep it plugged and get back up and running. Yeah, just try to make it easy for guys. Now on the piping kits, that's a, another really popular product, especially for you know someone who may already have the turbos or you know, taking them from one truck to another. What kind of piping kits? Does stainless diesel offer? Well, we make uh, you know the single turbo swap kit piping only, as well as complete. You know, a lot of guys will have a you know a bolt-on stock location turbo, or um, they even want to take their 351 turbo and put it in a different location with a nice cold air intake and all of that and fancy uh, you know anything they want. But um, you know, for the most part, the twin turbo piping sold separately as well. And then we've got a section on the website for guys that like to fabricate. You know, there's a, you know, I love, I love welding. I love uh, building things that um, always have. And, uh, you know, for guys that love building their own stuff, you know, we've got an array of all of the flanges we use in our kits, like our, our T6 CNC flange. It's very thick, uh, holds a gasket well. You can work, um, you know, all the flanges, all the elbows, everything's sold separately. So a guy that has part of the equation, he can have the rest, uh, you know, in pieces if you like. Do the piping kits are they for Cummins, uh, Duramax, and and even Power Strokes for your, for different turbo setups? Well, currently um, we do all the piping kits mainly for the Cummins, um, just just because I guess that's what we're our niche is I guess or specialty. But we do offer a line of Duramax intercooler pipes, and uh, we've got some new things coming um, down the road that may include some Fords. Okay, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of guys out there like to build their own kits and, you know, do it themselves, and, and it's really awesome you guys offer offer some products to do that. That They're top-quality products. You guys use them, and and they can set that up themselves if they like. Yeah, a real popular uh, a weld, your, a weld your own downpipe or even make your own downpipe. Um, those have been very popular for guys that like to weld. Saves them a couple bucks, too, because, you know, a little cheaper when they weld it versus us. <laughs> it is. It, for the Cummins engines, what, what year ranges do they cover for for piping kits and, and even the compound kits? Uh, yeah, well, we, we just uh, basically uh, cover all the way to 2016, all the way to 1994. Now, we've done a handful of first-gen twin turbo kits, uh, some special one-off things, because the first-gens are unique as far as where the firewall's at and the drive shaft comes down on the passenger side on the four-wheel drive truck. So we've done a handful of those as well. Those first gens are a little tricky because they're, they're awesome trucks. They run forever. But, yeah, the compound kits are so hard to do on them with, with the drive shaft there on the four-wheel drive. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, one new thing, I guess, uh, you know, for the 16, 13 to 16 trucks, it was, it was a challenge to do our, our new 400-400 twin turbo kit on that chassis. Things are definitely 
uh, in the different locations <laughs> on the newer trucks. How much time goes into, say, doing R and D and coming up with a kit? Say for like a brand new truck, like a 2016. Well, there's definitely a lot into it. You know, um, you know, fitment's quite a bit different, and then the concept. You know, it's like what, what, what do these guys actually want to do with these trucks? You know, brand new truck. We had a uh, one of our dealers out of Texas. He said, "Hey, I want a twin turbo kit for my brand new truck." I'm like, "Okay, bring it up." <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> we just made that happen. It's hard sometimes as a diesel enthusiast to know just how much blood, sweat, and tears, and time, and and effort goes into making a production turbo kit that you can ship all over the country, or your dealers can sell all over the country, and they will fit that truck as long as it's in that year range, you know? Oh, yeah. There's tons of late nights, um, lots of busted knuckles, <laughs> um, <laughs> lots lots of time uh, sacrificed away from the family, that's for sure. As far as, say, specking a, a compound setup, or even a, just a single turbo setup, if if a truck owner calls you guys and they say, hey, I want X amount of power, this is my use, you know, I may tow heavy, might not tow at all, this is what I want to do. You guys really specialize in helping people pick the right turbo setup. That seems to be probably the major, majority of the questions we're getting. Um, you know, hey, you know, I see this kit, I see that kit, you know, my buddy bought your kit. Um, you know, he said it spools great, it does this. You know, that's that's probably the roughest question that you can get. Um, it's all subjective. Uh, what spools really good for one customer might not spool as good for another customer as far as their perception of it. So you really got to talk to the guys and feel them out and see what they want to do with their truck. Um, everybody, of course, wants a thousand horsepower truck they can pull a fifteen thousand pound gooseneck trailer with. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, uh, and it's it's possible, but there's definitely some trade offs. But um, you know, we've got kits that work really well in that low end horsepower, you know, five six hundred on a single or a compound. Um, and then, it's, of course, a thousand twelve hundred horsepower on a compound kit and anything in between. But um, I really like to talk to the customers to see uh, how they want their truck to drive. And that tells tells me exactly what combination that I'm going to put together for them. What are some very, uh, say, proven or common turbo setups? I know it varies a bit on the common rails between a 5.9 and a 6.7, but what's a great, say, turbo for 550, 600 horse, can tow, might go to the track, you know, say... Modified CP3 and some 90 horse nozzles, lift pump, a smart EFI. What's a, a really good turbo for that kind of street truck common rail application? On the 5.9 side, uh, a 6368 is very popular. Um, we got guys making, you know, uh, ridiculous horsepower and being, being pushed beyond what we recommend with that charger. But in general, we recommend, you know, 500, 500 to about 689 horsepower in that range. Okay. It's very towable, very drivable. You can pull a gooseneck trailer with it. And I go to the track and uh, just have a great, great time. It's a, it's an awesome daily driver size. On the six sevens, those of us that own them and <laughs> have been around them know they can move a good amount of air. And I, how does it how does it change on a six seven for say the same kind of power level and and use? Well, the, the same thing on a on a six seven is completely. Um, it's it's almost completely different. It's just a, it's a different animal for sure. Um, they are able to spool a turbo larger than you would imagine. <laughs> yep. uh, on my on my drag truck, for instance, we switched from a five nine uh, block and head combination to a six seven engine, and you know made the made the VP gear case fit and everything. And uh, on the drag truck last year, basically we had a T six one thirty two exhaust housing, ninety six wow. turbines. <laughs> On our Big. triple setup, that was the it was the manifold charger, <laughs> T6 manifold, <laughs> and you know we're talking a VP truck here, you know. So uh, this thing it's pulled right up, and if everybody sees uh, ever seen us run at the track, I mean it comes right up and rock and rolls. So six seven is definitely a different animal. Um, for like a stock truck, uh, say stock injector, stock fuel pump, just a good tune. Uh, we've seen five hundred five fifty at the tire with a swap kit. Um, the 366 will do it, um, but uh, our 465 kit is probably one of the most popular ones for the stock guys that want a daily drive and tow. Um, and of course, we have the 468, 467, 7, 
and uh, our hot single kit for the six seven guys. Um, they still tow and daily drive um, in that size range, but uh, we're making around eight hundred and fifty, eight hundred to eight fifty range with our five blade four seventy two on a daily driver truck. <laughs> that used, to be, that used to be a race truck not long ago, and now you guys are driving exactly. around the street. <laughs> One of the, the questions I've always wanted to ask, and, and I, I've never really been able to, but when you have an S300 charger, say on a 6.7 versus an S400, is there any durability or longevity increases by using that S400 frame with the larger shaft and the larger internals on it versus a 300, or are they about the same? You know, the, the bearing system is definitely larger, um, which requires maybe a little bit more volume, you know, oil volume. And so the guys that are pushing the, the, the 400 chassis a little hard and the 300 as well, we recommend our Extreme Duty Dash 6 oil feed line. Um, uh, as far as like the bearing systems themselves, you know, the shaft's definitely larger on a 400 frame. Um, you know, some of the tricks that uh, we've learned over the years is definitely uh, – don't put too tight a housing on them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of customers. A lot of customers will, you know, they'll they'll think they'll have to have a ninety, and we'll recommend against it. And you know, there's just longevity there, as as anything. But uh, if you're going to sled pull or drag race, I mean, definitely recommend a four hundred frame over a three hundred in many cases. What kind of characteristics can a truck owner expect, say, with a ninety versus a one zero or a one ten? Not necessarily racing, but say on the street. Sure. In general, one exhaust housing size on a 400 on a Cummins, um, say from a 90 to a, a 10 or a 10 to a 110. Generally, at peak pressure, um, you'll change five pounds of peak pressure from one exhaust housing size um, on a Cummins. Uh, Duramax, that's a different animal. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, uh, in general, on a Cummins, that's what you'll see. So if you were making 50 pounds with a with a 10 and you put a 90 on it, you'll make 55 pounds with the 90. That increase, it may not necessarily be beneficial per se. Say it might be more efficient um, or might make more power. Say if you went from 55 on a 90 to 50 on a 1.0, is that what you guys see, you know, say in testing is is the volume and just the efficiency of the charger and and boost kind of all playing into it? It definitely play, plays a huge role. Um, uh, like on our competition chargers, for instance, uh, we like to run negative dry pressure uh, just by having a very efficient combination um, with the compressor uh, cover and the compressor wheel versus turbine sizing. And then uh, we can make that happen, um, of course, with uh, the right engine combination. But, you know, when it comes to having high dry pressure, you'll, you'll hear people talk, you know, oh, my, my dry pressure is one-to-one. Um, that's generally pretty efficient. But if you can make that happen with negative drive pressure, it's uh, a real good thing. Yeah, a lot of six seven guys, especially with the stock turbo, the drive pressure is insane on it. And, you know, with the tune, a little bit of fuel, it just gets even worse. And it might make 40 pounds or 45, but is it a good 40, 45 versus going with one of your turbo kits? Oh, exactly. Well, what's really nice about getting rid of the VGT uh, and it's kind of a trade-off. I mean, you get rid of the engine brake, but you gain uh, the ability to keep your head gasket intact, especially when you turn the fuel up. A lot of guys have done multiple head gasket jobs on their 6.7. <laughs> yep, yep. So, yeah, and the 6.7s, I mean, they got they got crazy dry pressure. And when you size things right, they end up being just uh, an awesome tow truck as far as making power. Um, you know, these guys will put on just a – just a, a standard, one of our small, you know, daily driver swap kits and just uh, 550 horsepower stock injector truck. It's just crazy. So for 2016, what, what are you guys working on or, or, or think you might be releasing here, you know, this year for, for the, the Cummins and the Duramax and even the Power Stroke guys? Well, we've got, uh, we're working on a larger uh, primary turbo, um, you know, for our compound setup. So it's going to be an 85 millimeter range. So that's going to be new for this year, hopefully a, a summertime release. Um, we also have a uh, our 400 400 kit uh, release coming up soon for the 2013 to 16 trucks. Where can people see you know pictures or releases you know of these products? Where's the best place to to find this info out? Well, you can check us out on stainlessdiesel.com. Uh, also, our Facebook page. We put 
tons of uh, uh, you know event photos, uh, videos as well as uh, pictures of products and uh, lots of things on there. But uh, we also, you know, for customers looking for product, uh, definitely hit up your local uh, favorite dealer. You know, we're just like uh, Street Diesel Power. You guys have an extensive dealer network, and that's that really helps. You know, in in different states or areas, you know, for people that that may want to talk to somebody local or have you know a shop put it on or or get some info, the dealer network for stainless diesel is expansive. That's really cool, and, and people need to take advantage of of the kind of expertise and the reach your product line has, you know, across the country. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, the the dealers out in the field, you know, the guys that are working day in and day out, and they've seen you know hundreds of trucks come in of the same, you know, six, seven guys that, that need a, a head gasket fixed or, you know, they have a VGT that's stuck and uh, they, they know how to handle that. And we've got some fixes for it. So Awesome. Well, we'll definitely uh, put some links, um, you know, on Facebook and, and on the podcast so people can check out all the cool pictures and, and see what you guys are working on. And, uh, you yeah, know, we definitely appreciate you taking time out of your day to come chat with us. Um, all the, the guys out there that have wanted us to get you on the podcast – yeah, you know, they wanted they wanted to hear about the turbos, what you guys are working on. We're glad we could we could help do that. Hey, that sounds great. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. It was a, a good time being here. Don't forget, Diesel Power Podcast listeners, get one hundred dollars off any stainless diesel order over six hundred and fifty bucks. Call and mention the Diesel Power Podcast with Stainless Diesel, or visit stainlessdiesel dot com or streetdieselpower.com. Until next Monday, keep the shiny side up. <laughs>